Hello, everybody. My name is Piyushi Mukherjee, and I'm your speaker today for the topic of self-confidence and self-awareness. Uh, let us start our session today with a little introduction about who I am. My name is Piyushi Mukherjee. I'm a practicing uh, counseling psychologist, and I'm here to uh, talk a little bit from the perspective of uh, human beings about what is the idea of self and how does it affect our confidence and our awareness. Let us start with a small presentation that has been pre prepared uh, to give you a little more clarity and have a little conversation on. So very often, as, uh, as young adults or as uh, practicing professionals, we often come across the topic of how do we naturally build self-confidence and self-development as individuals. Very often, I'm sure you remember, um, long-distant relatives talking about us from the perspective that, oh, I remember you being really shy and very young and not talk talking much when you were a child. But it's a big surprise that you've turned out to be um, so talkative, so upfront, so confident. Uh, has any one of us ever, ever thought of as to what must have gone into the process of identifying ourselves being confident in today's world? Let's start. To be able to uh, dive deeper into self-confidence and self-development, we will have to uh, look a le little deeper into what is the meaning of self concept. Okay. What is the idea of self? How does one prepare the idea of self? When we are born, our identity is being provided by our parents, the culture we are born in, uh, the name that we are provided, the gender that has been assigned to us at birth by the doctors or the hospital, uh, it also depends on the social economic strata that we are born, uh, whether uh, we are the first born, second, third born, or later. Uh, it also depends on whether we have individualistic ideas and choices to make. It's a very long journey, and a child really takes a very long time to identify with oneself as an individual. Slowly, the self gets identified with the idea of self-concept. What is self-concept? Just to give you an idea of what self-concept is, it is an image we have of ourselves. Also essential to understand that uh, we learn a lot about ourselves through the concept that we hold about ourselves, including uh, whether it can be changed, whether it is dynamic, whether it is static, it is how we perceive our behaviors, our abilities, and unique characteristics. For example, beliefs such as I'm a kind person, or I'm a good friend, or I'm an obedient child, uh, or I'm a good student are all overall a part of self-concept. Our self-perception is important because it affects our motivation, uh, attitude, and behavior. It also impacts how we feel about the person we think we are, including whether we are competent or if we have self-worth. I think it's also very essential to understand uh, that how do we perceive ourselves through our motivation? If we have achieved success very early in life, the sense of motivation tends to be very high for an individual. If the individual has been brought up with the right attitude, can turn out to be confident, and is a go-getter. However, with a bad attitude, a person might become a bully or um, might want to find a way of getting things done in a manipulative way. Behavior is generally the effect of what we think and that gets represented to our peers or our society around. Um, Self-concept tends to be more malleable when we are younger. And, and still uh, through the process of self-discovery and identity formation. Now, this is a very important concept because what is the meaning of um, self-discovery and identity formation? 
being a counseling practitioner i have often realized that identity formation sometimes gets restricted in clients to only being a man or a woman or a husband or a wife or a child or being somebody's sister or being somebody's daughter or being somebody's wife uh, or of some man's son okay identity formation is critical as to what are the unique identifying features that i have as an individual which makes me different um self discovery is a long process um self discovery can be um is a very interesting process which one experiences as and how the life moves ahead um let's imagine take an example that you've recently joined a company as um as a junior officer eventually with her work with promotions that has been assigned to us slowly in a period of 5 years you get res- you you get a raise and you are promoted to the level of a junior manager or a or a manager this this particular new leadership role explores our possibility of discovering ourselves in a completely new light and the leadership that changes our scope of influence it changes our scope of uh, creating an impact and getting work done or delegating tasks or achieving a team goal so hence uh, the idea of self uh, is is also discovering one's abilities at different stages of life now um, it's also essential to understand as to how do self esteem and self knowledge uh, affect our identity of the self self esteem and self knowledge is also the process that we are ready to take up to explore ourselves in deeper aspects a uh, self knowledge means being aware of one's own motivations uh, positive traits negative traits what we are good at what we are poor at sometimes what we have to really work hard in for example um as a uh, as as an ex person i might be very good at understanding people or at identifying uh, how uh, how relationships can be managed but i might have a lacking skill of understanding the transaction of money so that is that is an idea of self knowledge which i need to work upon self esteem is also a very very detailed process which we will see eventually as we move towards the next slide but self esteem is another very important this thing of how much you like accept and value yourself um all contribute to your self concept in the form of self esteem when i say uh whether you like yourself so people who like themselves for who they are will have a completely different form of confidence uh, a different form of motivation a different form of drive towards achieving one's task um accept uh, a lot of us could belong to different strata of the society um could belong uh, to a new generation let's talk about something that has been happening around us right now so people coming from the lgbtq community uh to accept oneself for who they are whether they are trans men or trans women or um whether they identify themselves as somebody from the community is extremely important to um, for for one self esteem how much do you value yourself if you think that you are an important part of a larger society then it creates a different form of esteem of oneself self esteem can be impacted by a number of factors including how others see you how you think you compare to others and your role in society these are very important uh, that's why people at higher leadership levels political levels are looked up to uh, people who have the onus of responsibility of carrying um, a responsibility in the society is given more respect and looked up and hence their self esteem could be high it's extremely essential that there has to be congruence between um what we think we are and our reality uh it also means that the social self creates a very very important stage over here because how we see ourselves also has to be identified by the society um that is sometimes a bridge which is not mended because it may happen that what we think of ourselves might be higher than or lower than what the society thinks of us at some point of time 
Hence, it's essential to have congruence between what we think about ourselves and our made reality around us. Self-concept, it develops in parts uh, through our interaction with others, in addition to family members, close friends, other people in our lives, our teachers, our mentors, the place of work uh, can also contribute to our self-identity. Um, let's move a little further into identifying the idea of self. When we talk about uh, personal development, what helps us to develop ourselves um, in a brighter frame of reference? The choices we make uh, in, in becoming who we are as individuals, the identity we have and accepting it, identifying our talents, uh, whether we feel supported for the potential that we have, the dreams that we aspire from. Now, this uh, wheel that you see in front of you is, is a working model of what personal development can sound like. So when I walk into an organization, who was I at that point of time and who do I become today are extremely critical features in the number of years that have gone by in making myself. It's necessary that I work. Um, let's start from the top uh, one, which is called a self-awareness. Am I aware of my strengths and weaknesses at any given point of time? Extremely critical and useful to understand. Self-awareness often leads to, um, is a bridge between who we think we are and what the society identifies us as. Hence, self-awareness is critical and needs to be evaluated every now and then using various sessions like th during therapy, um, during um, various human lab processes where uh, we are aware of ourselves in the here and now. When we talk about self-knowledge, this is where the amount of knowledge we, we think we have about ourselves, like, our, like I mentioned, our strengths, our weaknesses, our threats. Uh, these are all important aspects to identify every now and then for a personal development. Identity is another very important aspect of uh, personal development because identity is something that we decide for ourselves or the society decides. If they are both in sync with each other, it's, ex ex it's established. But however, if what I feel about myself is very different from what the world sees me as, then there is a clash, there is a barrier, and that can create serious problems in one's self-concept and awareness. When I say talents, talents is something which is showcased, which is put in front of the public to see, evaluate, and uh, rate on. Um, talents can be multiple. You could be a great dancer, a singer. Uh, you could have an art, an artistic bent of mind. You could create something completely innovative. You could be a scientist. Um, uh, you could be an entrepreneur. You could be anybody. Um, if this talent is identified in self and there is enough amount of work and effort put into developing the talent, then it can be, and if it is accepted by the society for the work that you have done, then it is labeled as talented. Then it is labeled that you are talented and you're gifted. Potential. Potential is a very important word because human potential is vast. And that is exactly what the entire part of psychology is based on, that we, each one of us has tremendous amount of potential in us. However, very, very rarely all of us tap into it and identify as to how it benefits us to make our lives easier and also make lives of others easier. Human capital. Human capital is a very interesting concept because um, human capital is where human beings become the most important resources to make an organization grow uh, or to, to make any organization grow. Um, Amul India is, is an example of human capital where the work of one person when it was channelized for an entire village where it was streamlined and properly managed, uh, the entire human capital was converted into a self-fulfilling um, entrepreneurship of Amul, which was supplying um, a fresh dairy uh, milk uh, to different parts of the country. 
quality of life is another very important thing. Quality of life defines a lot of things. Um, good nutrition at early age, good education, um, safe environmental factors, um, safety at home, uh, enough amount of love and support from family, um, being protected at the right age from environmental uh, factors which could prove threatening at a young age. These are all parts of the quality of life. Um, our quality of life also defines our day-to-day -day nutrition. It also decides um, whether we can maintain consistency and persistence in our efforts into achieving anything that we set our heart on. Quality of life becomes critical because um, mental illnesses, diseases, etc., also reduces the quality of life at any given point of time. Death of a loved one, um, poverty, loss of job of a parent, um, change of cities, any form of trauma can affect the quality of life to some degrees. Dreams. Dreams are um, things which we see for ourselves as potential, which stems from the potential and the talent that we have, which we see with our eyes open, what we aspire to be. Um, dreams as a means to reaching our aspirations. Um, do we have a direct impact of what we do in our everyday life? Does it get impacted in our subconscious mind in a positive way so that we put in our energy and uh, channelize it in a particular direction of achieving it? Dreams and aspirations. Aspirations is something where you are ambitious of achieving a particular position or a particular quality or a particular stage in life where you want to move ahead and you want to keep that as, as a benchmark for yourself to achieve. So these are all important aspects for one's personal development post identifying of who I am, of the idea of the concept of self. Let's move ahead a little bit and um, explore the idea of confidence and awareness a little more. Each one of us is aware here sitting that this is the very famous Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I have included this as a part of um, uh, affecting self as a combination of Carl Rogers' idea of self-concept, which we just spoke about uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, so how has Maslow's hierarchy of needs uh, impacted the idea of self? Okay. Um, our life is divided into multiple stages of understanding and uh, identifying our needs. Um, as you can see, this pyramid stands in itself for multiple dimensions of understanding that the one which has the maximum coverage um, and forms the foundation and the base is that of physiological needs. When our physiological needs are met with, the idea of self uh, increases in our, um, in our life. We feel more uh, stable, secured. Um, we feel more, um, the idea of um, self-knowledge and self-awareness is higher. These also comprise basic needs and I also include this as a part of the of, of improving the quality of life, like the basic needs of food, water, oxygen, the idea of shelter, temperature regulation, uh, sleep and relaxation, activity and exercise, sex. These are all extremely important physiological needs as an adult, as a child, and some of them as an adult to achieve early in life. Um, a lot of it, if misplaced, can affect us and uh, erupt, erupt as complexities at later point of our life. Uh, lack of food and water can create multiple barriers and multiple defense mechanisms of, um, of food disorders, etc., which can, which does not, uh, which reduces the quality of our life to some extent. Sleep and relaxation as children, as growing up adults, young adults, as adolescent, as, as adults is extremely necessary. Otherwise, it leads to exhaustion and fatigue, which also proves to uh, reduce an, our idea of self-esteem. Um, while growing up, uh, when we move to the second tier of 
Maslow's hierarchy of needs, we, we observe safety needs. As children feeling safe from potentially dangerous physical and psychological situations and events forms an important safety need as children, as growing up adults, and even as grown up adults. Security of health, work, money, routine, and familiarity are extremely critical, especially in the time of crisis like today in the 21st century, when we are heading towards global pandemic and uh, faced with a war in the in, in the world at global level, uh, it's extremely important to understand as to how would it leave um, the self-concept of a child being brought up in a European continent or in Ukraine, or um, how would it affect the idea of one's esteem as one grows? The idea of love and belonging in a family is extremely essential and uh, important to note, affiliation, feeling part of a group, um, family, socially or at work, giving and receiving trust, uh, acceptance, affection and love. These are all important features of love and belonging as a need. The idea of self, um, when we talk about the idea of confidence, when one is growing up, when one is when one feels affiliated to a religious group or a corporate office or being affiliated to a community uh, can provide tremendous amount of trust and faith in that individual to strive to become better human being or an individual. Um, feeling like you belong to a part of a group or social uh, or at work is, is an important factor uh, to develop one's self-esteem. Respect. Um, even for that matter, receiving trust, um, to be trusted and to trust uh, go hand in hand when we talk of um, having self-awareness and uh, building, aspiring for better things in life. Affection and love from a very early age um, can lead to uh, ident can lead to very strong family bonds, can lead to um, a deeper awareness of oneself. Uh, Esteem needs. The next need is esteem needs. And this is critically important because as in how we grow, go ahead at, at workplace or in family lives, esteem needs are important. This is feeling competent. Uh, being better than what I was yesterday is a, is a direct um, relation to human growth. Um, self-esteem and self-respect. This is, this is the stage where we talk about the idea of self where one starts to resonate better with what the world thinks about us and whether we are in congruence with that thought about ourselves. The respect of others, family, socially, and at work, extremely important um, because it forms, it, it comes right at the center of um, the hierarchy of needs by Maslow, hence it's essential that if our idea of self, because this is the stage where we um, showcase our talents and our aspirations to the world and uh, try to um, So I'm going to continue with what I was saying. Um, Um, as we were talking about the esteem needs, um, I would like to further highlight um, this particular point of, uh, of cognitive needs in us. The desire of for knowing and to understand the need for meaning and predictability are equally important when we um, look at identifying ourselves socially and personally. Um, where we want to become a better person than we were yesterday, again, as a part of feeling competent. Um, meaning and predictably, predictability adds a value in ourself, which makes us uh, move forward towards uh, creating a better impact on the society that we live in. Aesthetic needs are, again, extremely important and uh, critical because it talks about um, aesthetic needs about beauty and order 
It talks about creativity, design, and art. Um, for the creative souls, I think it's excessively essential that they represent themselves and what they believe about the world to be in form of art. Hence, um, aesthetic needs are critical in formation of the self also, uh, in idea of self, in building one's self-confidence and awareness. Self-actualization is reaching one's full potential. Um, when we talk of entrepreneurs, um, like Steve Jobs, where um, at some particular given point of time, uh, Steve Jobs was at the peak of his career in um, at Apple, where he was one of the board members of the, of the place. And there was where he realized that everything that he was capable of becoming was something that he had achieved. And we also know that he was removed from his own company as one of the mentors. And he was forced to leave his own company and um, because of certain ideologies that he believed in. And we did realize that eventually, if you read his biography or autobiography, you will know that Steve Jobs started Pixar right after that as a challenge to himself, where he started building his uh, right from the position of um, safety needs to love, to belonging, to esteem needs were again re-established. So self-actualization can be a process of becoming everything one is capable of becoming, staying there and maybe losing it at some point of time also. So if you, so is it a possibility that you go higher up in the pyramid and lose it at some point of time? Yes, it is a complete possibility. And then what is the concept of self that you become aware of is also extremely critical to recognize in oneself. Um, with this, I'm going to um, move towards the next part of, um, of this presentation. Self-confidence and its components are critical to understand because uh, confidence per se is a very, um, it's, it's a perceived perception of someone in our own eyes. So there's a lens which gets formed with our own perceptions to how we see or how we look at somebody. Improve your self-esteem. So when I say that what is self-confidence, it generally goes from the perspective that I won't do it, that I, I it, it is, it's an unconscious, incompetent, space in our minds i'm not even aware that i'm not aware of it okay it comes from a place like i don't even know um try to imagine like this this is a fantastic example which i generally put forth with because uh, this gives a very clear idea of identifying of one's goals new goals that we set remember let's say if one of you wants to drive a car okay Till you don't have a car, it is not a problem. But the moment you have the money and the resources to buy a car, uh, you start, uh, you, you look at the car and you say, oh my God, I can't do it. I, I don't know how to drive it, okay? Um, but then when there is a push from the family, you purchase the car and you kind of park it. Then there is a need which arises and you would say that I want to do it. I want to drive my own car. It's a beautiful, luxurious car. I want to take my family out on the drive. So the feeling comes like I want to do it. Then the question comes like, how do I do it? So somebody recommends you that uh, there is an elder person in the house who can teach you how to drive, etc. And then you may, let's say you finally settle down with the idea of going to a driving school. And uh, that's where you start, where you, where you say that I've tried to do it. And then in the first two, three days, if, if any one of you has driven a car, you'll realize that it's really difficult. Because the moment you turn on the ignition and you put your foot on the clutch and you leave it, the car jolts and stops. And uh, that is where you feel that, my God, this should have been the easiest move, but that is the most difficult stage, the stage to start decision of starting. That is what builds your confidence. If you are ready to push yourself to an extent, to a limit, and push yourself beyond that, you can try and do it. Eventually, after 15 to 20 days of practice on a new car, you say, I can do it, right? And the first time you make a family member sit in the co-driver's seat, that's where you say, I will do it, okay? And um, try to remember the last time you've driven a car or a two-wheeler, 
and you've taken some a loved one with you on a long drive, that's where you say that, yes, I did it. So self-confidence is a journey. It's a process. It is not a one-day thing. You have to prove yourself at multiple levels to identify your strengths and your weaknesses. Um, this is how we progress as an individual and become who we want to be. Um, like the car event, there are multiple events like that in our life where we have to demonstrate our confidence. But for that, we have to be a learner. The spirit of being a learner should never be given up when you want to be confident and be more self-aware. Um, with this, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and um, I'm going to uh, come back to talking a little bit about um, self-confidence and identifying one's um, in innate needs and requirements of who we are as individuals. Um, Self-confidence can be developed at any given stage of life, even if you come from adverse situations, if you believe, um, if you get motivated, if you are a learner, if you are ready to take the risk of giving yourself another chance, it is never late to start anything new. Um, Self-awareness is something that we need to have at every single stage of life. As uh, as excellent um, meditative techniques like Vipassana, et cetera, turn us towards building higher self-awareness, you would be aware that uh, being in awareness of one's own existence is critical in understanding where we are in the here and now. That pushes us to become better individuals in the future. So I wish you all the best and I hope this has helped you in some way in gaining a deeper access into your level of self-confidence and building your self-awareness. Thank you so much.